Hello, hello, hello. In this video, I would like you to derive an equation about the intensity on average received by the Earth from the Sun. So for this equation, you cannot, literally cannot find it on the data booklet. So you can see here, this is a data booklet and you don't see this equation. However, for this equation, uh, you will be very likely uh, required to derive it in the exam paper so for sure that you want to remind yourself when you do revision uh, study about how you can do this because it is quite popular before I let you try derive it yourself I will need to give you some hint and explain certain terms firstly for s referring to solar constant it is talking about for example if earth is here and the sunlight is going supposedly because it's so far away so it should be a parallel light uh, but at the same time, let's not forget we have atmosphere all right, around the Earth. So the solar constant here is referring only to the intensity. So that means it is in watts per meter squared already um, for that particular intensity before going through the atmosphere. So on your textbook, you can see how you can derive it and it should equal to 1400 watts per meter square and similarly on the data booklet you also find this number solar constant uh, roughly also 1400 watts per meter square so if you really want to know how this was found then it's basically by the fundamental definition of intensity which is i equals to p over a and here the a is actually referring to the spherical area that the sun can produce so if I try to draw the diagram then uh, I can do this right? imagine sun way bigger of course way way bigger and so when light can travel through for a certain time then in all direction of course then it can cover up to a way bigger sphere okay again this is 2d only but in 3d it's gonna be a sphere when light is going to be emitted for a certain time so imagine um, a very slow motion of laser got shot out in all direction then all the laser that come up with will be like a sphere okay and so by the time it reach to the earth this sphere will become as probably something like this but again this is not in scale of course okay and so that's why we have to divide in your textbook here divide 4 pi d square because 4 pi r square is the surface area of the sphere and d is the distance between the sun and the earth okay like this one okay and well in theory i think it should actually be uh to the earth center but since we are talking about to the atmosphere then i don't know right is that average earth distance is that much uh, actually, I don't think the thickness of the atmosphere matter a lot in this order of magnitude. So um, we can just simply ignore that. So that is why you get the 4 pi d square. And somehow, for some reason, uh, that could be explained by another video, that people know the sun's power that is being emitted is 3.9 times 10 to the power of 26. And therefore, by using all this number, then you can calculate the intensity when the sunlight reach to the top of the atmosphere. So once again, solar constant is only talking about the top of the atmosphere only. The one that we want to derive is the average intensity received by the Earth. So that is to say, after it has gone through to the atmosphere, then on the unit area of the earth then how much intensity uh, that it is receiving so lastly there's one more thing that you don't know probably it's called uh, alpha in, the, in terms of symbol here is referring to a word called albedo albedo is simply referred as uh, the ratio of how much is being reflected so you can see in your data booklet in chapter 8.2 right here you can see the so-called definition here albedo equal to total scatter power over total incident power so what you can 
uh, perceived right now is how much of the light intensity are being reflected basically so it's a bit similar to um, efficiency how much is being uh, reflected or how much being uh, used in a useful way one interesting thing that uh, you can write down somewhere on your note is that uh, earlier we talked about emissivity right and emissivity is how much of light you could effectively um, absorb all right and re re radiate again uh, by the body and here for alpha for albedo uh, the light was simply reflected away so there's no absorption here and so uh, for the ratio of albedo and emissivity they actually have a relationship that is not spoken in the textbook or even the IBA syllabus so that's gonna be uh, e plus alpha equals to 1 or you can do it as uh, 1 minus e equals to albedo uh, but then this one in the derived work here is not going to be necessary so you can put it aside maybe you can put it in the data booklet and this might be useful for your homework later on but then this is the idea uh, of the albedo itself that should be all you need to know for deriving this equation and if you really need to know more hints of course uh, you're welcome to uh, read more of the textbook on page 332 and 333 but if you want more fun uh, more excitement then maybe you can try to start deriving the equation yourself so pause the video now, try it out, and I'll show you how we can do it. 2,000 years later. All right, so there are actually two parts of doing your derived work here. So the first part is very easy, which is just by thinking of the definition of albedo. So once again, albedo is how much in terms of ratio the light got reflected or scattered away. So uh, if you want to find out how much being retained or transmitted, through it then it will simply be the remaining so 1 minus alpha all right the ratio so that means you find out how much is going through it and since at the top of the atmosphere the light intensity from the Sun is actually s so we just have to multiply s here so then uh, we can find out how much of the intensity from the Sun can go through the atmosphere this is the first part and this is easy for the next part, it's slightly harder and you have to think of the geometry of the whole process. So let's try to zoom in here. And so if you try to redraw the Earth again, it is a sphere. And the sunlight after passing through the atmosphere, it should still be like parallel to each other and shining onto the Earth. Although in fact, there should be some refraction happen uh, in the atmosphere. We ignore it. Uh, we just assume it just goes straight Okay, in this, in this calculation. So, if you try to think about the light that got received by the Earth, it's actually not on a spherical area, but then it comes in a circle, actually, right? Because only within that circle, the light can actually illuminate onto the Earth. So, the idea is like here, I got a ball, right, which is one of my favorite here. And if you imagine there are lights shining through it, uh, the one at the back right would be dark this is like why we have night and daytime uh, when the earth is rotating and so no matter which direction you are there must be only half of the earth is uh, being illuminated by the sunlight but then if you think of the light is going in a parallel light then only a circle of light right that particular area would have uh, the light literally illuminate onto a sphere so that's why in our calculation we should only account this circular area which by pi r square and for the r we will be using the earth radius because that is how it get defined because if the earth gets bigger then this circle will also get bigger as well but then it is 2d instead of uh, 3d or whatsoever and so this can tell you the power that actually comes from the sun. However, when the Earth tries to receive this power, uh, it will be shared by 
a larger area because this is 3D, so the area is much larger. And so by calculating this theoretical area, we'll use the whole of, right? Because we are trying to calculate in the average. So you may say, hey, uh, at the back of the earth is actually zero because it's at night. But then uh, since we, we take into account of the self rotation, and therefore we just take the whole area. Uh, it's just more about your choice. But then here, we will do the whole of. So that's gonna be four pi r square for the spherical surface area. So I think now it's very obvious uh, why there is a dy4 in your equation because uh, we could now evaluate the average intensity to be of course uh, 1 minus alpha bracket s that is how much light intensity remained after getting through the atmosphere uh, when we try to calculate its power then we can find it is pi r squared because after we multiply that with area then we find power once again the equation is i equals to p over a so if you multiply a with intensity then we are now finding it uh, power however we still want to keep it as intensity so that's why we divide the area once again but then since it's shared by the whole earth in spherical shape then we will be 4 pi r 4 pi r squared so that is why once again these got cancel out and leaving you with the number of 4 down below all right so that's is exactly the reason and in again in your exam probably you'll be asked to do this yourself because you don't have the formula in your data booklet you cannot just recall it you can't just say oh i remember this equation i just write it down uh, you can't do it you have you really have to show this and this in your working steps lastly you may ask me hey mr wong why do we bother to calculate this right because this is not probably not even representable by the actual intensity you receive on a spot on earth because it's taking the average um, my answer is or my explanation would be uh, yes right it account for both day and night so if you really want to account for only the days then you can times it by two right that's one thing the second thing is uh, people in the past may use this equation to verify the relationship between the parameters and we may even use the number that we measure to calculate some other things for example in, in fact in this equation the one that is the easiest to be measure is probably this instead right because this is simply uh, you, if you have some sort of measurement tool like a light intensity meter uh, then you can simply uh, measure whatever at your spot at your location Hong Kong or whatever New York whatever uh, is light intensity and then you can use that to calculate some other things so let's say if you already know the uh, not necessarily earth radius because you can see in the equation there's no earth radius here but then if you know somehow the uh, solar constant then you can use these two number this number and this number to calculate the albedo of the atmosphere so maybe by using that we can calculate the different things maybe the thickness of the atmosphere etc which may be useful for our investigation in the future second lastly um, if you try to look at the textbook calculation if you try to substitute all the numbers which of course you can do it as well by s equal to 1400 and albedo uh, taking it as 0 0.3 and so 1 minus albedo will be 0 0.7 and you'll be able to find the light intensity received by the earth to be 245 watts per meter square and so what do you what do you think about this number then if you try to think about when you try to operate a certain electrical appliance uh, it should also be a few a few hundred watts as well if you think of a light bulb usually uh, like the one that I have right now uh, it usually will be less than 100 watts all right you can go and check out uh, the package of the light bulb that you are using uh, usually it's about 50 or 80 uh, or at most 100 watts per light bulb so if you think about the fact that if we human can harvest the light energy totally 245 then it's gonna be a lot all right we probably can 
uh, escape from using the fossil fuel which would emit the CO2 and other greenhouse gases and make again our planet a better place. So that is why there is a company called Solar City. I'm not sure if you heard about that. It's actually also by the crazy guy Elon Musk. All right, you can see here. Here, Solar City is a subsidiary of Tesla. Tesla again is the electric car company. And so, other than uh, the boring machine, the SpaceX, Tesla, and recently the Neuralink uh, for like a machine, like a uh, the chip that put into your brain. Uh, Elon Musk actually long ago has already thought of uh, the future or as a vision that human would eventually rely on the solar powered all right other than fossil fuel or maybe for nuclear it's not really that uh, versatile or it takes a lot of effort to uh, monitor so solar panel is actually one of our future goal and in uh, a lot of different countries we have already adapted into using this green energy uh, renewable energy and so uh, we hopefully will see more of the different countries would get into this and again hopefully to reduce the amount of co2 emission really really lastly if you are sitting at my school that i'm teaching you know that we have a mini weather station that is something like that and it collects uh, weather data all right including temperature uh, rain, raindrop or uh, wind speed etc so you can actually access to those data through the link here I'll put the link in the description below and the most important thing that I would like to see and link it with our topic right now is the solar radiation so now you can actually see that the solar radiation at the time right now now I, um, what I'm doing this video is on 6th of September around 4 p.m. Uh, so you can see that the solar radiation is actually 36.8 watt per meter square so it's actually way way lower than the one that you have from the Tesla so 245 and that is something to do with the cloud with the different weather however you can see that interestingly uh, you can see the peak is that the peak of today is actually 700 something so I think that's why uh, we would need to take the average because that is the most important it's not about just this moment or in the next moment when this is a peak but then it's more about the average you should be able to observe its trend as well so i think there's a button you can switch to the timeline so this is temperature wind speed wind direction rain pressure humidity solar radiation so here you go okay so you can see that uh, when it is at the night before sunshine it is you know zero obviously because there's no sunlight at all but then later on when it is uh, around I think around 7 a.m. I guess the sunrise and uh, there will be some sunshine onto the machine the weather station itself and so that's why it go up but there are times maybe there are some cloud that covering the sunlight onto that machine and so that's why it will drop way lower so that's why it kind of fluctuate from yeah I think 200 something is a really good estimation already and of course there are some other consideration as well as say maybe the altitude or maybe the direction facing the Sun etc so here is certainly something that I would really want you to uh, take a look and try to see the pattern It's really interesting to see uh, how different pattern in weather would correlate with each other how and how that would change with your time so once again I'll put a link in the description below that's all for this video I hope you enjoy it if you like please do click the like button and subscribe and in the next video we'll do more calculation using the equation that we have just derived I'll see you again in the next video